When people tell you they're from Rotherham, they might tell you about Wentworth Wood House or Magna or the South Yorkshire Transport Museum. But us locals, we know something else that makes this town different. Every night, no matter the weather, something walks down our street at exactly 3.03 a.m. It makes this sound, this low chuckle. It's never hurt anyone. It's never asked for anything. Trust me, I spied on enough houses to know it's not just some local pulling a fast one. A lot of his older neighbours find it quite comforting, knowing it's out there, chuckling away every night, keeping us safe. Of course, this is all just how I see it now as an adult, but try telling a kid that we have to lock the doors and windows every night for something that you can't even explain to them. When we were younger, my brother and I would sneak into the kitchen some nights just to listen. Mum and Dad would kill us if they found out, but they shouldn't have worried. We were smart kids, we listened to them, and even if we snuck downstairs to listen, that's all we'd do. We only ever listened, we never broke the one rule. Never try and look at whatever is chuckling. Our street is about 10 minutes from Parkgate. It's a bit too far out to get the free bus, but Gaz from number 11 used to run the oldies down twice a week in his minivan. I never got on with him, but you can't fault the bloke. We look like some out of a postcard or a Harry Potter book. Cobblestone driveways and houses toppling onto one another. We had a farm at the top of the road and a phone booth at the bottom that still worked. And even a little shop that sold bread, milk, and those little aliens you get into plastic eggs. My parents were kind folk. My dad was a top bloke and he was always calm, except whenever we talked about the chocolate. Then he'd go white as a sheet and his eyes would dart over to the front door as if he was checking if it was still locked. It didn't matter if we were in loft or basement, his eyes would always find it. And every time, even if it was just in passing, he would end the conversation with, remember kids, just don't look. Those exact words, even to his mates in the pub. I don't know what mum thought about the chuckler. I used to crack open my door some nights and I could see her in the living room at 3.03 on the dot, wide awake. She never looked, she wasn't daft, but she just listened to the sound, as if she found comfort in it. Some of the kids had grown up with it since they were babies and assumed every village had their own chuckler. This was Rotherham, don't forget. But we were from out of town, we'd known life without our 303 saint, and so we had to have a visit from the welcoming committee. These were older folk, kind but stern. They sat us down and told us about the chuckler. They advised us that while it hasn't hurt anyone yet, it's best to invest in some good locks. Well, Dad thought they were having us on, but even so, I don't think any of us slept a wink that night. My brother and I stuck down, snuck downstairs at 3am, just to see for ourselves. But Mum and Dad were already there. We were huddled up on the couch, bonding in this new house of ours, and for a bit, it felt like a big game. But then, at 3.03... Just as they said, the chuckling came. Next morning, Dad went to B&Q and put locks on every door and window. Every night since and in the years that followed, he would lock and check each one without fail. At first, he used to hide the keys in all sorts of places, but after a while, he forgot to hide them. Mum said once he'd realised the next morning, she thought he'd be full of thunder, ready to get the belt and give us a punishment for taking them out, but we never touched the keys. We knew better than that. Since then, he, he eased up on the hiding, Happy to leave him on his bedside table, just safe in the knowledge that his boys wouldn't take him. And we never did. That is, until the new boy came to the street. They moved in over the road, and the welcome committee visited them the same as us. My dad even went with them. But we'd hear his parents in the playground joking about how daft it all was, how they moved to the countryside to feel safer, not scared. Reese was his name. He was a rough and tumble sort of lad, used to the big city and a more dog-eat-dog -dog type of playground. But we got on well enough, and a few months in, his parents had to go away for the weekend, so we agreed to look after him. I was so excited. Me, having the new cool boy stay at my house. I put on my best Thomas the Tank Engine pyjamas, ready for a night of films and games, but Reese didn't want any of that. He kept asking about the chuckler, the locks on my house, if my parents believed in it too. He said no one had given him a straight answer, so I told him all I could. He asked if we were ever curious about what the chuckler looked like. We agreed, yeah, I suppose. But we weren't stupid enough to look. Then he revealed my dad's keys and told us he'd swiped him off the bedside table. He waved him in front of us and I tried to grab him but he was stronger than me and he ran out of the room. My brother and I chased him down the stairs. He was approaching 303. I knew it. I could feel it. We scrambled over each other but before we could get to him, Reese had already put the key in the lock. The clock struck 303. The chuckling began and Reese wrenched open the door. I grabbed my brother for dear life and thrust his face into my chest. I rinsed my eyes shut tighter than I thought I could and I prayed 
honestly prayed for mercy from the chuckler. I called out for Reese, but the chuckling had stopped. There was silence, followed by the heavy thud of the door closing. It's okay, I heard Reese say weakly. I closed it. My dad came running in then and I spun us around, happy to open my eyes towards the house. Dad asked what happened. I said that Reese had looked. He mouthed, just Reese? I nodded. He still looked mortified, but some colour had returned to his face. His kids were safe, that's what mattered. Classic Rotherham. He ran to Reese and pulled him into the light, looking him up and down. My dad was full of thunder, but Reese was white as a sheet. Mum runs in and hugs onto her boys. Dad is still looking over at Reese, and there's a knock at the door. Don't answer it, says Mum. The knocking grew louder and louder, shaking the whole door. It was trying to get inside. Call the police, Mum shouted. Suddenly, the knocking stopped. Police? Something said from the other side of the door. Police? It sounded like it was making fun of her. Police? Call the police! Tap, tap, tap. Police? Then it moves back from the door. It's knocking more and more. Come on! It says. To me, to you! To me, to you! Stop it! Reese cries out. I won't tell anyone, I promise. A voice spoke quietly, softly. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. The noise carries on through the night. Whatever it is, it, it sounds like it's tripping over things, getting up to all sorts of hijinks. One minute it's imitating a policeman, next minute it's, it's setting up its own ice cream parlour. It's sickening. It slipped on so many banana peels. So many. It stopped around 7, but we did not go out until at least 9, until we could hear other people out in the street. My parents called Reese's parents and they were here by lunchtime. My parents didn't let us sit in on the talk they had. My parents kept asking us over and over. If, they kept asking us over and over if we were sure that we hadn't seen anything. Reese and his family left that afternoon. We never saw him again. Rotherham is known for a lot of things. And some parts of it are very old. And there are some spirits on this island of ours that don't lay awake. Some do mean to harm us, I, I do believe that. But some, well, as long as you let them chuckle on, they won't harm you. In fact, they'll give you good luck and joy for as long as you need it. Just don't look at them. Don't ever look at them. <laughs>